In cryopreservation, revival, of course, is the big unknown. Putting someone in cryopreservation is relatively comparatively easy. You can show under good conditions that there's no ice formation, that the ultrastructure, so meaning the cells and the connection in the cells are all well preserved. Revival, though, has a lot of open questions. So you can cryopreserve someone, you can keep them in cryopreservation, and then a lot of research is needed to make the revival work. There is a good amount of conceptual work. In fact, recently, a relatively comprehensive, actually, in fact, very, very long A to Z, almost guide of how revival might work was published by an author and nanotechnology expert in the US called Robert Freyers. The book, in fact, can be found online and we're going to link below the video called Cryostasis Revival. It's 700 pages of relatively technical descriptions. So, you know, take a couple of weekends to go through it if you want to. But to give you a quick summary, I'm going to briefly discuss of how revival might, in fact, work. And as a disclaimer, I want to be quite clear that most of what I'm going to say is almost in the realm of speculation. Some might, edu might be educated guesses, for some there might even be some amount of experimental data, but by and large it is currently not yet known if and when cryopreservation revival or revival from cryostasis will be possible. Now, during the process, when you start the procedure at cryogenic temperatures, so somewhere around, in most cases, if you're an ITS doer, negative 140 degrees maybe, if you're in an immersion doer around negative 196, you would need to start warming up. Now, the big problem why uh, revival from cryogenic temperatures currently is not yet possible is, among other things, to be fair, is ice crystal formation during the warm-up process. So you would need to start the warm-up process without having ice crystals formed during that process. Now, this book, the reason why he's a nanotechnology expert is that a lot of very, very advanced nanotechnology would probably be required to do this. So one conceptual idea is that very advanced nanobots would tunnel out all the vasculature, so all the blood vessels of the body, and again, most importantly, always the brain, to then stabilize the infrastructure, the structure of the, of the blood vessels, of the vasculature, and then warm up locally very, very quickly so that you can have very high uh, warming rates faster than the so-called critical warming rates of cryoprotective agents so that you can warm faster than um, basically, basically you outrun the ice crystal formation during the warm-up process. You currently cannot do that because currently you just would be able to warm from the outside. So the outside would be very warm, whereas the middle of the brain um, or the body would still be extremely cold. So if you use all the vasculature and basically you have warming heat sources at every point during the vasculature, you might be able to increase the temperature fast enough to outrun this ice crystal formation. Now, during the cryopreservation procedure, so meaning going down in temperature and going up, you would still have some amount of damage, of course. So there might be holes in membranes, there might be misfolded proteins, there might be wrong pH values for cells to survive in, and to be fair, a very, very, very long list of other problems. So with nanotechnology or other techniques, you would need to solve all these problems basically while you do this warm-up procedure. And if anybody wants more information on that, of course, Please look at the book. Again, very comprehensive, but you know, every chapter has a summary, so you kind of can read the summaries and get a good understanding of in general how the procedure might work. In fact, and we're gonna link it below as well, there's also a shorter summary of the whole book that was done by some people in the US to kind of give a first glimpse a bit more extensive than what I'm gonna talk about today in the video, but kind of not like the 700 page, very comprehensive overview. Now, once you've done all this warm-up procedure, you have, you have you know, kept the structure, the cells are all doing well. Probably now, once you start giving oxygen again, the cells would start metabolic activity. Now, on an individual cellular level, the cells would basically start living again. And now, most likely, the whole brain, so the whole organism, basically you, would snap into action again at some point. Probably, as much as we understand, there would not need to be some magical, you know, you know, electric shock or whatever it is, whatever you could imagine from science fiction movies to restart the whole organism. Basically, when all the individual cells start working again, basically once the repair is done, once they have oxygen and again, once they have nutrients again, they would probably start, you know, metabolic activity, start living again. And then overall, 
the cells would, in quotation marks, the, the neurons could start to synchronize and probably the whole organism would step, snap back into action. Of course, as a disclaimer again, this is a very, very crude and rough understanding how it might work. It's very possible that the actual revival procedures would look totally different. And in fact, the book Cryostasis Revival details a few alternative methods of how revival might work under certain circumstances. For example, if you need, if there's more damage, if you need to do a, basically a, almost like a cell by cell rebuilding of the whole organism. So there's a lot more information there. I would definitely encourage you to at least read the summary of the book. It gives you a very good, it's eight pages or something like that. So it gives you a very good overview, a bit more detailed, linked below. And otherwise, you know, a lot of research needs to be done and we will be one of the parties which will do that research over the next, well, years and decades. Last but not least, if you want to help us out, we we'll help the whole field of cryopreservation out. Subscribe to these videos. You know, the more people see these videos, there's more interest or more interest being generated. YouTube, um, you know, shows them more to, to more people if there's engagement. Of course, also comment on these videos or reach out to us if you have any questions about revival or any specific topic that we have discussed in this or one of the prior videos. We're always more than happy to engage with the whole community, answer questions, and otherwise, you know, if you at any point decide that cryopreservation is for you, more than happy to talk to you about that as well. Go to tomorrow.bio to find more information about us and how to reach out.